Obviously, A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith are going to get a ton of attention in this one. I've already made videos about each of those players and kind of how I think the Chiefs will attack them and what they might do to counteract that attack. However, I think that there's one third guy that maybe isn't getting the attention right now that he deserves, and that is Dallas Goddard. We talk a lot, uh, you know, on this channel especially, about how the importance of a third option. You can do things to take away two options. You can double team the number one receiver and put your number one corner on the number two receiver. Or you can even double team the top two corners if you, or excuse me, top two receivers if you want to. But unless you're going to get crazy and go with a three man rush and uh, double team three guys, which I've never seen seen in the NFL before. Reality is, the third option is pretty much always going to have one-on-one -on -one matchups, and Goddard is someone who can really take advantage of those matchups. So I want to talk about what he can do effectively, and the first thing is just win one-on-ones, right? Something like this play, the one you see on the screen, this is a real way that he can be effective. It's a one-on-one -on -one matchup. His route, that's the one you see on the screen. And watch what's going to happen. Goddard uh, starts this play. He starts this by running pretty far out towards the outside, actually. Really kind of selling that that might be where he's going. However, he is going to be running over the middle. And for the player who's trying to cover him for the Giants, he's, you know, there's some separation right here. That little fake definitely got him open enough. Goddard then has the speed and the size to be able to sort of make that catch and kind of box him out. And is not easy to bring down as well. Nearly got a touchdown out of that and still takes the first down for sure, this is the kind of thing that the Eagles are capable of. If you want to, especially towards the, you know, the goal line situation, you're going to get the extra attention towards the receivers. Well, maybe sometimes the favorable matchup, even on a play like this, where actually Brown and Smith each had one-on-ones, maybe the favorable matchup is still sometimes throwing it to Goddard because he is that good. And, you know, in a situation like that, had a good angle to get the football. There's also stuff like this where you can scheme him open. Again, the Chiefs do like to play some zone coverage, and if they do, this might be an opportunity to scheme him open, uh, similar to how, if you watched my Devonta Smith video, I talked about how they might do that with him. But here's what they're going to do, which is it's going to be a zone coverage play. And you see how you have a receiver running a deep route. The goal in that is to get the corner out of the way. And it's going to work. You know, spoiler alert, it is going to work. So therefore, the only way Goddard could get covered where he's going is if a linebacker or really a linebacker would have to be the guy who stays back and covers him, which again is a mismatch. Goddard can beat linebackers in, uh, you know, down the field, certainly. But the other issue is that the Eagles are running a play action, which can get those guys who are in charge of covering over the middle out of position, making it easier for Goddard to get open. Watch how one display begins. The play action works, it does get Giants players out of position, and at this point, Dallas Goddard is just about to get wide open. Hertz is able to make this throw. Obviously, he's not going to miss that, and Goddard is able to, again, lowers the shoulder. Seems like he picks up an extra couple of yards every single time he is in open space, and he's able to do something like that where they're able to, you know, again, scheme him open and use him as a tool. However, even in stuff like this, which I still think could be a factor in this Super Bowl, is what it's a little bit more simpler, where again, same idea, right? Almost the exact same concept that they're doing, a little bit different this time, but again, same idea of trying to get Goddard open in that area. However, this time, one Hertz goes to hit uh, Goddard. It's good defense. Corner comes in really well, reads it well, is in position to make a tackle. And if he can make a quick tackle, Goddard might not even be able to get to the 30-yard line on this play, right? That's where we're at right now. But this is where the physicality of getting the ball in someone like Dallas Goddard's hands can really come in. Watch him, I think, do a good job of you know uh, shoving the player out of the way and still again gets a uh, at least close to the first down marker doesn't quite get it but gets very close to the first down marker on a play that you know seemingly he wasn't going to get past the 30 instead he got past the 25 so that's just a added value and in one game where every yard matters this could matter a lot him being able to do that could matter a lot, but will it be enough to beat Kansas City, or at least to have a good game against Kansas City? Well, we have to talk about the other side of the ball now. How does Kansas City do against good tight ends? Well, there's a couple of things they do. This is a good play, I think, of showing both, uh, you know, how they can defend well, but also how they can get beat in the same uh, play, where it's going to be a zone coverage play, and you just have George Kittle. I'm 
I specifically picked out uh, a game where they're playing against a good tight end. You could argue Kittle's better than Goddard, but they're both very good. And right when this play begins, it's going to be an interesting situation, I think. So look at what's happening. So you're going to see that there is a, a player who is defending uh, Kittle, and that is Nick Bolton. Nick Bolton is the guy in coverage, and I would say this is pretty good coverage. I mean, obviously, if Garoppolo just tried to hit Kittle where he's standing right now, uh, it would just be intercepted. But here's where things could get a little bit tricky, is that in zone coverage, you're supposed to keep an eye on the quarterback. You might not have to do it as much against Garoppolo, but against Hertz, you better believe that in this situation, Nick Bolton, who I should mention is a great linebacker, uh, but in that situation, he's going to have to pay attention to two different guys at once, and this is where Dallas Goddard's value could come in. Because think about just this play in general. Bolton is looking towards the quarterback. You have Kittle, who is behind Bolton, so in this way, Bolton can't see exactly where Kittle is going because he has to keep eyes on the quarterback. So when Kittle moves towards the top of the screen, there's a window for Garoppolo to hit him, and Garoppolo and Kittle have good chemistry, but so do Hertz and Goddard, so I'm sure that they can pull that kind of thing off if the situation arises, which I suspect that it will. So this is good coverage, but good offense can always beat good defense, and for the Eagles, they have a good offense. Offense. These two guys are very good, and I think could find ways to still beat uh, Eagles, uh, you know, or excuse me, a Chiefs defense that is very good over the middle. And, you know, coverage in that area, they're very good, but that, is, that doesn't mean that they can't still be beaten. Right here is another interesting thing. So, you, you might notice that I've already uh, paused it before even showing any of the you know, leading up to the play because I want to talk about the two safeties. So as of right now, it appears that those two safeties deep, right? Maybe this is a uh, cover two zone. However, you're going to see one of the safeties lurk in and get to the point where he's so far in that it's pretty clear at this point, this is not a cover two. That safety is not staying deep. It was a bit of a disguise pre-snap. Okay, sure. You want to do disguises. The Chiefs do disguises all the time. Here's where issues could arise, though, is you have a safety who is deep, uh, you know, the guy who I've circled, but look at how far towards the top of the screen he is. They're playing cover three zone, but again, the issue is that the only player covering deep is going to be the corner who is on that side of the field, and he's going to probably be paying more attention to the wide receiver on that side of the field, or just the most out far outside receiver, eligible receiver, whoever it is. On this play, it's not actually a wide receiver. It's going to be Kyle Juszczyk, but still, again, you could use a receiver. I'm sure the Eagles would use a receiver in this scenario. However, as you see when this play begins, the safety on the top of the screen is paying attention to the top of the screen. The corner on the bottom of the screen is paying attention to the bottom of the screen, and this now allows Kittle to get open. As you see, Garoppolo is able to hit Kittle, and they're able to pick up a decent chunk play. Now listen, when you're a team that disguises a lot, these things can happen. I'm not going to sit here and say the Chiefs have to be so much better at this stuff. This is just part of their game, kind of part of what they do is they run these disguises, they get a little creative, and sometimes that's going to result in, sometimes it's going to backfire, right? That's just part of the strategy of football. I don't necessarily look at it as the Chiefs have to not ever have these situations happen. Obviously, you would like to clean them up, but the real thing is, I think if these situations do happen, the Eagles have to take advantage, and it might be taking advantage with Dallas Goddard. He might be the guy. So, all right, scoreboard time at this point. I think I am going to give uh, Dallas Goddard a, a plus two in this situation. Uh, you see at the bottom, it's on a scale of one to four. I'm giving Dallas Goddard a, a plus two, and that is not necessarily how good I think he is, but just the mismatch in general, him versus the guys who will be trying to cover him. I think he's very good, and I think really why it's a mismatch is the attention other players are going to get. I think that's why I like it. Same reason why I like the Devonta Smith matchup so much uh, is because A.J. Brown's going to get a lot of attention, uh, you know, I think Smith will get the second most attention, meaning Goddard could be the guy who comes in and, you know, with the third most attention could really thrive. So definitely just things the Chiefs are going to have to find a way to stop. But yeah, as a whole, that's what I think of all of this. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like any of the, you know, if any of the other videos you see on that chart seem interesting, uh, I made videos on all those things. So uh, it's on the channel. Definitely check it out. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always... Thanks for watching.